This is obviously a larger piece. It's closer to five, it's actually over 5,000 carats in weight. And it shows a nice dark blue band of gem chrysocolla, the silica, gem silica. There is some banding that has a slightly different coloration. And on the top, there is pure chrysocolla. Pure chrysocolla is a brittle material. When you grab it with your fingernail, you can end up with little blue fragments of it. But that is a thin veneer along the vein section. You can see that there is a dark blue, purish vein of gem silica on the top. On the bottom, it gets to be a little lighter in color. And the edges of the vein were exclusively pure chrysocolla. There's some green here, probably a little bit of malachite. There is some white, probably quartz, and that goes all the way around and disappears in spots. This is a wedge-shaped specimen. So this top layer has the best of the gem silica. And this is still very nice gem silica, but it isn't as bright and translucent as the top layer. You can see that the vein section has some black mineral, has some blue chrysocolla. There is some particularly gemmy chrysocolla here. It's very, very transparent, and it's probably not going a great distance into the rock. But if it did, this would be a really exciting kind of gem material. that is wet. It shows the darkness of the material. You can see some of the details a little better. You can judge whether or not this is a good vein section or if it's just a veneer. It looks like it wedges to this side but it's very wide on this side. So if you wanted to make a very large face on a piece of jewelry, this would be a good one to use. It does have the two-toned colors, a little bit greener on this side, a little bit bluer on this side. Uh, you might even utilize the white banding if you were creative in your way of carving this material.